Well, hello everyone, and welcome to part one of this two-part episode of Project in Pajamas, where I'll be taking you along whilst I make myself a new 1870s corset. In this episode, I'll cover working on the pattern a bit, mock-up fittings, and preparing to cut fabric pieces for assembly. A little warning beforehand, I had enormous brain farts during the filming of this video. Speaking is very hard sometimes, especially when it comes to using the proper terms in a foreign language. So, I just want to get that out there. My apologies for not using the proper terms. Anyway, I hope you still enjoy. And here I have my little um, reference and research desk uh, with all my fashion books. Uh, just to see how they've done, like the boning channels, the flossing, like all oh, how they've things uh, finished off. And then I think because because I have music, a music blue, blue silk, I am um, taking inspirations out of these two. And the books I'm using is um, this one from, I think this is from v &A. Yes, from the Victorian Albert Museum in London. And I'm using the well-known Tushin history book. And this one is um, this one. And I think this is also a V&A book. Let me check. Yeah, 19th century fashion in detail. The pattern I'm using is from the Cut Shows, which is actually a Dutch fashion magazine back from the um, late 1800s. Um, and it's this is like a collection of bound editions. And it came with patterns. Now the pattern I'm using is actually not featured in this book, but um, it can be found online and I'll post the link down below in the description. Um, but the patterns that came with it looked uh, basically like this. Um, it said in the um, description in the book or in the magazine uh, which number of patterns you had to use. Um, this is obviously, uh, obviously the um, instructions, which are too small for me to read, but um, I could read the number, so I highlighted which pattern pieces I needed, and then I um, isolated them. Um, and this is how that looks like. This is on a, a half scale. And then I enlarged that. Now, as you can see, I used a lot of color. Um, and that's mainly to indicate um, what the original pattern was and what my adjustments was and that I can have a look back in um, um, what alterations I have done to it. Um, for example, here you can see I my um, bust was way too big for me. Um, so I had to take that in and it's a, it became a funny line. So I fixed that now because this is the pattern I used for my very first corset. And um, let me tell you, that thing is disgusting right now. <laughs> because I've used it for so many years. I used it for a lot of bowls. I dance in it. I sweat in it. And it's just, um, it's a white corset and it's just um, gross. So this is the the corset I made out of that. As you can see, it is pretty gross. I don't know how well it shows on camera, but yeah, it's like sweat stains and it actually got a little bit of rust. But I've used this um, for many, many years um, for F basically almost every costume that required a, a corset. And um, I, I did a lot of dancing it, which also meant I sweat a lot in it, as you can see. <laughs> Um, and um, because it, the outer layer is from silk and the inner layer was from a heavy duty um, cotton and I think actually a polyester blend, which is probably why I've been sweating in it so much. So it's two layers of the cotton and one layer of the silk. Um, so it's also a pretty thick one. And um, yeah, uh, it basically I didn't really make a mock up. And I just use this and as you can see it has been too small for me in the waist because this actually needs to be straight <laughs> um, and also with a lot of wear and tear as you can see the silk is starting to 
um, disintegrate and to tear away here and especially here where the cording uh, where the lacing happens um, yeah it's just it needs it's it's ready for replacement and for a, a better fit so as you can see this is my corset when it's on um, it gives me a pretty nice um, waist reduction. Um, I've had some alterations done in the past. It was originally like way longer in the front, like pointy. And I noticed that whenever I sat down, my busk was kind of poking me in undesired places. <laughs> um, so I um, took the busk out, I moved it up and I cut actually a piece of the busk off on the top. So my new busk um, it's actually this length, but like originally. Um, and uh, I don't know if you can see, I have a little bit of boob spillage. So what I've done is I've, because my waist here, this is actually my waist, I moved it up. Um, I cut the pattern in half and I moved it up so the gust is up so it comes higher here. And then I also, I don't know if you can see this, um, it's quite low in the back, which also causes, as you can see, my um, back fat <laughs> to spill over. So I've raised that, and um, this is really hard to see. Um, it's pretty far open, which means my corset is actually too small. Um, so I've um, made alterations to the pattern, which I'll show you in a moment. So I made some alterations and I hope you can see this on camera because if I lay it over on top you can see the alterations I've done to it. There. Um, so I made it wider in the waist, as you can see here, especially um, center back. And I made it higher because I felt that the the corset was too low for me and um, on some occasions my boobs <laughs> fell out. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I made some alter alterations um, re based on the corset I had. Right, first mock-up. Um, as you can see, I've only got boning on this side, not on these. Um, I am overall pretty happy with it. Um, there are a few things. I have the feeling I have a lot less um, an hourglass shape. I'm a little bit more straighter to my feeling. I don't know. Um, so maybe I'll make it a little bit wider even though I actually have space there. I don't know. Um, yeah, there is. Um, I have to. I don't know if this is right though. It looks like this gusset is like way too far to the back. I don't know. Um, well, it does its job and left my boobs. Um, <laughs> um, I like that it's higher. Um, I'm not sure if it's actually, well, technically it is higher, but it looks like to be on the same height as my previous corset, which is weird. Um, yeah, so, um, so yeah, the back I like because it's actually higher now and it reduces a little bit of the back fat and it closes way much. Um, it's still not a perfectly straight line, which I would more prefer, um, but it's, uh, I think this will be m way more comfortable than the other one, because I have more back support now, um, especially with all the weight of all the dresses and dancing in it, so yeah, I'm going to do a little bit of tweaking. This is my side profile. Oh, and um, by the way, the boning channels here on this side is actually like it is originally on the um, pattern, the original pattern.
pattern from uh, 1870s. Um, on my previous corset, they were adjusted, just like Marja, I don't know if I pronounced your name right, from uh, before the automobile. She made some adjustment in the bo um, boning channel, the way they are. So I think I'm going to try that out on this side and see how much of a difference that's, that makes. Final fitting. I have added a little piece here. Um, and for some reason, in the mirror and in real life, it looks like I have a way more of an hourglass than it's showing on the camera. Um, so that, I don't know if you can see the difference with that side on this side. And then because it was like going almost as a I pinched it a little bit here and in the back here and then I've added um, a strip of fabric and I draw I don't know if you can see that it's a pink I draw this a little bit higher so it's a little bit more of an, a heart shape and I'm back to where that is um, so I'm going to make my adjustments to the pattern um, and then we can cut out our final layers um, yeah so I think I'm going to go with this boning version uh, as in placement but I'm going to do it on the inside like this one does instead of on the outside now on this pattern I've also already done the alterations after I made a second well an actual mock-up which is this one which you've already seen um, me fitting it. And um, I've tried a few techniques in this one. First, I tried to make boning channels and sew that on top of the corset. Um, and that's how this looks. And I think um, because I want to cover it in silk, I'm, this time I'm going to do a one, well, actually two layer, but a uh, two layer used as one. Um, because I'm going to use a blue silk and an actual uh, cotton coutil. So it's going to be lighter, it's going to be thinner, and it's going to be all natural to prevent me from uh, having it too hot and too sweaty. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, I think if I'm going to do this with silk, um, there's going to be a lot of friction in here, and I think the silk will, will disintegrate very quickly. So on the other half, I did it on the inside, so the, the boning channels will only be made out of the cotton and out of silk. Um, and then you still have the, the channels visible here. It's just not raised. So there won't be as much friction, I think. And I do. Um, this time I'll also do the flossing um, as well. So um, another thing. Um, so this corset almost closes, almost closes like this. And I don't know why, but um, because I have spiral boning in the other corset, um, but it's it, it the the center back keeps getting wonky or wobbly or whatever you call it, and I I use spiral boning, so I've ordered spring steel uh, of the same width to put in the center back. So the four boning in the center back will be made of spring steel and not. Uh, spiral boning because um, I think there's too much flexibility uh, for the spiral boning so so the cotton I'm using is this lovely floral um, cotton coutil and it is by um, Whaley's I don't know if you can see that there you go uh, Whaley's Bradford from London and it's a cotton viscose um, blend um, and I yeah, it's going to be much uh, lighter and breathable and stuff. And then I had some silks in my stash. Um, for some reason, I have a lot of blues. <laughs> um, so I had these, and um, it don't, doesn't show up on camera very well. These are a little bit more grayish. Um, and I think, um, I think I'm going for, to go for the light one just to keep things a little bit fresh. Um, especially with some white and then I'm going to floss it and stitch it with an ivory color and maybe I'm gonna use this um, lace but I think I have to see if I can get it cleaner and um, let it soak a little bit and hope it gets a little bit more white because I think it's too yellow compared to the blue uh, but I don't think I'm going to use this 
as the border on top. So often I get the question where I, where I get my silks and I ordered them um, from Germany from a wholesale company called Fucotex and I have this lovely um, color chart from which I can choose and see the colors in real and how they act with light and daylight. Um, so yeah, many of my, my silks come from here, from this company. Here I have cut out all of the cotille panels and I want to show you a little bit what I've done. I have cut out two um from I've cut out two front pieces and um I'll show you why. Because obviously you have to have a seam here for the busk to go in. And then I've got one piece on this side which will be um, turned in so all of this will be neatly finished if that makes sense so what my initial um, idea was to make felt seams um, and I am going to do that but I have unnecessarily cut extra um, centimeters of seam allowance to some of the panels which is fine because I can always cut it off um, better to have more than to have less <laughs> I mean you can't really add seam allowance anymore and then on the center back I have added extra centimeters here because um, as you can see it's going to be folded over and um, that will be the space for the eyelets to go and then this one will go will be folded over like that <clears throat> and um, either will be stitched along with the boning channel here and I don't know if this all makes sense to you guys or not <laughs> um, and then it will also catch um, this boning channel in underneath here so with this one I stitch this one first and then but it should be the other way around so this one should be neatly finished by being tucked under here Alright, so I have put all of my um, cotton couture pieces on the silk. The reason I'm doing this and not uh, use the paper patterns and then double the fabric is this way I can get a much more cleaner um, cut um, and to be absolutely sure everything is straight on the grain. This is what I've been taught at work um, to have a more accurate um, piece of fabric, especially if you have to double fabric. If you like cut out the silk and the cotton separately and then you have to lay them on top you always have some pieces that are not completely uh, that not completely match up so this prevents that and I always cut my silk um, just a slightly more um, bigger than the couture which in this case um, would not matter that much since I will be um, doing the sandwich technique I don't know what the correct term is <laughs> um, so these are obviously these are not all of my pieces because they didn't fit on this little square so I have to move the fabric but I just want to show you um, how I cut out um, when I'm doubling fabric this way so everything is cut out right now and uh, as you can see I have not cut the silk on this one that way this this um, uh, stays as, as true to the shape as possible. I only cut this out um, at the very last minute. Um, a little bit of um, detail here. Um, I'm going to prepare all of these panels to sew them together. I've already done one half of the corset. Um, but um, all the gussets I will minimize to a half a centimeter seam allowance instead of two. And um, that applies to um, this side seam as well, since this one uh, goes into the into the gusset and then attaches to that one. Same for this seam because that also goes into a gusset. Um, and then I will prepare all of the uh, panels for assembly. So how I'm, how I'm going to do this? Let me show you. This is already one half of the corset done. Well, not done. Um, I've done the flossing. I might add some more decorative flossing. I still need to boning in the center back 
um, but I'm waiting for the spring steel to arrive in the mail and um, the um, eyelets of course and then to finish off all the edges um, but this is basically how it looks like um, so a few things to mention oh well not to mention <laughs> um, so I don't know if you can see how I finished off the seams this is the inside um, as you can see, my waist tape is a little bit wonky here. I corrected it um, for my other panel, but it goes up a little bit. Um, so, so the inside as well as the outside is all neatly finished. Um, and the way I've done that is I made a little sample here. So, for example, this is the gusset, like the seam allowance with the gusset. This is my coutille. And my silk and I have ironed in I folded over and ironed flat the seam allowance to the inside so as you can see these will be basted together and the seam allowance is on the inside and the gusset or the other panel will be sandwiched in between and uh, those will be basted together and then top stitched up stitched on the edge so this way um, it is sort of a felt seam but um, it's neatly finished and less bulky I hope <laughs> um, but yeah um, it, it, it looks pretty smooth not too thick of a seam here um, so yeah let's prepare all the panels first Using a basting stitch, I marked the seam line on all gussets and seams that will be sandwiched. There's one thing I've got to mention and that is that the um, seam allowance and the top Although they get finished by a binding, you don't need any seam allowance there. But um, just because while working, as you can see with this one, um, especially silk, it frays a lot. So I always add half, oops, half a centimeter of um, seam allowance just to calculate into that fraying. And then once um, it's time to put on the bias binding, I will cut that half centimeter off. And then I will have a fresh, uh, clean cut of um, edge. <laughs> um, and I won't have any uh, fraying spillage or um, whatever. So um, what we're going to do now is... So I've moved the pins on top. This is where um, this will be cut to a half centimeter in a moment. But I'm just going to leave that for now. Um, I'm going to baste with machine thread normally i would use basing thread but that's a little bit too thick for silk um, it will leave too much of a hole so i'm just going to baste um, this these two pieces together so they will stay put um, while we do the felt seams and i do this all on a, a um, tailor's ham just because um, it automatically gives me a little bit of that ease um, like you would have on the body because so the, the, the top layer would be a little bit and this in this case it would be like minimal but when you're working with like thicker fabrics with maybe with wool or something um, you have a lot more um, you need a little bit a lot more ease in your fabrics but this already calculates in the curve of your body. And make sure that you stay away at least two centimeters away from your edge because this will be folded in. If you do it too close to the edge, you ha would have to take out your basting and other, otherwise your, your um, seam allowance won't have any space to go. So this is purely that the layers will stay in place while you finish off all the seams. 
and all the while um, make sure like everything's smooth um, and you don't sew it to your tailor sham <laughs> and then I will do another one just here because we'll be um, working on this area so this will just stay neatly in place as well so I will do this with all pieces where it's necessary the only piece I will leave alone and I will come to that to the last are the two center front pieces because um, they have a little bit of a um, other method other method to um, assemble so um, yeah I'll continue doing this and I'll see you in the next step before I move on I reduced the two centimeter seam allowance to half a centimeter on all to be sandwiched seams So next thing we're going to do is we're going to fold on the line our seam allowances for those that are going to be the sandwich um, seams and I'm going to prepare the gussets in the same manner. Um, so I'll start with the gusset and I'll cut only the cutil at the moment up to the corner. there and then luckily this cutil is very foldable like paper like it almost already wants to fold automatically there where the line is so you have that there So what you do then is then you flip it over. Oh wait, no. And then you cut the same for the silk. And then I flip it over. And I do the same with the silk. Alright, so this one is prepared for the gusset to go in. Um, next I'll do all the other seams the same way um, that are going to be the sandwiching sides. part one of this episode. Join me again next week for part two, where I'll be actually assembling the corset and trying my hand at flossing for the first time. If you want to make sure you won't miss out on episode two, you can hit that bell icon and you'll be notified as soon as part two goes live. Once again, thank you so much for watching and I hope you'll see you next week. Bye!